Hey, this is Marius Perone from the Audio Engineering Institute. My friend Josh Lopez told me he had written some songs and asked me if I could record a demo of the songs. Now, usually, we would call the band in and set them up in the recording studio. This is kind of a long, drawn-out process because we have to set up about 10 mics on the drums, we have to mic up the rhythm section, we have to connect headphones for all the musicians. Well, it just so happens that our recording studio is inside a large mega church called CBC. CBC has a huge auditorium they use for their services. And in that auditorium is a stage that already has all the instruments and microphones that we need. It's all set up permanently. So we are going to use that equipment today for our recording. I will be back here in the control room and the musicians will be on the other side of the building in the auditorium. Just, just have here we are on stage. We're going to talk to Jacob Longoria about the drum kit. Okay, so the top is a uh, Audix i5. Yes. Audix i5. Uh huh. Bottom Shure SM57. Then what on the toms? Uh, toms, we've got D series. So I believe it's uh, like D2s and D3s. D2. Or something. Uh, D2, 2, and D4, if I That's remember correctly. These guys here. Then, what do y'all have on the kick here? D6. It's an Audix D6, a yep. really nice kick drum mic. Usually, these mics back here are to pick up the congas, but they actually work pretty well to get kind of a uh, distant sound on the drums, kind of almost like a room sound, so we'll probably use some of this in the mix. Now, with all these connections on the stage, you might think that I'm going to have to run several cables from the stage all the way over to the control room. But we're not going to have to do that. Let me explain how the connections will work. There are over a hundred microphone connections on the stage. Let's analyze just one of those connections. The bass drum has an individual microphone. We said that we have an Audix D6 mic on it. Let's see how that mic gets routed. Now, usually, when you plug into a stage pocket like this, the signal goes directly to a mixing board. But here at CBC, each mic connection on the stage goes to a three-way microphone splitter that lives in the amplifier room. This is the amp room back here at CBC, and those mic splitters are over here. Right here. 61. The splitter distributes the signal to three places. It goes to the main mixing board in the auditorium. That's the thing we call the front of house position. It also goes to the monitor mixing board on the stage. And the third place is the recording studio control room. When the mic signal gets to my control room, it shows up on this patch bay. We're dealing with input number 61, so let's see if I can find it here on the patch bay. Yeah, there's mic 61 right there. This wire I have in my hand feeds track one of my recording computer, and I always record the bass drum on track one. So let's connect it to mic 61, which is our bass drum signal. The software using here is uh, called Nuendo. It's made by Steinberg. Most people use Pro Tools. I used to use Pro Tools, but, uh, and Pro Tools is good, but I just got really used to using uh, Nuendo, and so it works really well for me. My brokenness you see, Something more inside of me Now, keep in mind that we usually use the stage for a live performance, and the singers usually listen to the stage monitor speakers on the floor. We call those the monitor wedges. But for our recording today, I'm going to turn those speakers off. I don't want any extra sound spilling into the drum mics, so we will put headphones on the singers. 
The one-sided headphones work well for background vocalists, so they can hear their voice in the air from their mouth to their ear. Note that Josh and some of the other musicians already have in-ear monitors, so we don't have to change anything for them. So, with just a minimum amount of setup, I was able to get a multi-track recording of the songs. And if you already have all the instruments and microphones set up for your live performance, get creative with the signal routing and you'll find that you can also use that gear for multi-track recording. Hey, I hope you got some usable information from this video. Until next time, this is Marius Perone with the Audio Engineering Institute.